Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10th stop of the Great Canadian Farm Tour. My name is Colleen. I'm a teacher working for Agriculture in the Classroom Canada, and I've been having so much fun bringing you on these virtual farm tours to celebrate Canadian Agriculture Literacy Month. Today, we're on Prince Edward Island, where we're going to be visiting a pork farm and learning all about how pigs are raised. As always, I would love to see where you are all joining us from today, so please feel free to put this in the chat. You can also use the chat throughout the tour for any questions that you have, so you can type them in here and we will ask our farmer them. Don't forget that all of our farm tours are being recorded, so if you've missed any in the past, you can always go back and watch them again. Okay, let's see where some people are joining from. I see lots of classes on Prince Edward Island. This 3B class, a 5B class from Prince Edward Island, welcome. Sticking to the East Coast, we have a class from Fredericton here. Nova Scotia, welcome to your 5-6 class. Niagara Falls, Ontario, some grade eights. And Northern Ontario, we have a homeschooling family. Glad you've been enjoying the tour. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Agriculture in the Classroom Canada is so exciting, excited to be hosting this tour in partnership with Agriculture in the Classroom PEI. I'd like to welcome and introduce my co-host for today from this team, AITC PEI's program coordinator. Welcome, Erin. Thanks for having me. It's, um, it's awesome to be here today, and it's awesome to see so many classes from across PEI and the rest of the Maritimes and uh, the rest of Canada. Uh, I want to start off today by acknowledging that the land upon which we gather is unceded Mi'kmaq territory. Epiglet is covered by the historic treaties of peace and friendship. We pay our respects to the indige indigenous Mi'kmaq people who have occupied this island for over 12,000 years, past, present, and future. Thanks, Erin. So there are many different types of farms on PEI, the most popular being a potato farms. But today we're really lucky to be visiting a pork farm and learning all about pigs. So pork farms are important because they provide meat for us humans. And this meat is filled with many nutrients to help us have a healthy diet. I am so excited to introduce you today to our pork farmer, Amy. She's going to teach us all about pork farming. So welcome, Amy. Um, Amy and her husband, Joel, and their three children, Grace, Rose, and Reuben, run a farrow to finish pork farm on Prince Edward Island. This means that they raise pigs from birth, then process and sell them. They raise the pigs inside barns to protect them from weather, predators, and outside diseases. Originally from southwestern Ontario, Amy and Joel and their family moved to PEI in 2015 and established Pure Pork Farms. Farming is a way of life for Amy and Joel and their family, and they are very passionate about providing high quality pork for people. So welcome, Amy. Thank you, Erin. We are so excited to share how we raise healthy, nutritious, nutritious pork for Canadian families um, having great meals. So there's lots to, of things to know when raising pigs and uh, like what they eat, their life cycle, and a lot of government rules to make sure that what we do is, is good for Canadian people. Um, we can't run this farm on our own and we need a lot of people to help us. For example, even though there's a lot of technology on a farm, um, things like making this presentation, uh, is complicated for us. So we want to say thank you to Ontario Pork for helping us and guiding us. And um, they were instrumental in helping us do this. So, but just not other people, but people on our farm. We have lots of employees that are part of our team that can help us care for their pigs. So I want to introduce you to some of them right now. And here we go. Hi, I'm Jesus. I work in the pork industry. I am a farm supervisor, and part of my job is overseeing the daily operations in the farms, making sure our animals have food, water, good quality air, animal well-being, and following all the biosecurity protocols to keep the farm healthy and away from disease. Thank you. Hi, my name is Raquel. 
I'm an office manager. I take care of all the invoices. I answer telephone. I respond to email. In fact, I run the office. Hi, my name is Tumelo and I'm a foreign technician. My main responsibility is to take care of the South and their babies. From day one until the last day when they go to winning. Hi, my name is Christian. I'm a sweat clinician and I work here to take care of the feeds, uh, uh, all having a feed, water, food temperature, and that's my job. <laughs> Hi, my name is David and I make feed for pigs. This here is the mixture that mixes the feed, just like mixing cookies. I haul the manure from the pigs to local fields to grow healthy crops. How we do that is we use these tanks to haul it to the fields and spread it as fertilizer. Hi, I'm Farmer Grace and I take the data from the sap cars and I input it into the computer. Hi, I'm Farmer Lubin. I assist in tracking the data. Okay, Amy, so nice to meet your staff, see some of your pigs, and even a couple of your children there at the end. Yeah. Uh, so nice. So we're really excited to learn more about your farm. Just before we begin, I'm going to remind our participants of some of the learning components of the Great Canadian Farm Tour. So we hope that you have your Great Canadian Farm Tour activity book and your passport in front of you. Make sure you keep an eye out for today's mystery word. It's going to be appearing in the top left corner of the screen, and you can write this word in your passport. And also, we've already received lots of amazing entries to our social media contest. Just a reminder to teachers, you can post a photo of your class or just of their activity books and their passports um, participating in the Great Canadian Farm Tour and upload it to social media. All you have to do is use the hashtag GCFT22Contest for a chance to win a prize pack for your class. Okay, let's start the tour. Okay, so Amy, some of our viewers might be wondering, we're doing a pork farm tour and you're in your house, and I'm sure you love your pigs, but not enough to be in your house. So can you explain why we aren't in the barn today? Well, being in a rural community, you don't have super great internet and there are so many areas of the barn that in order to do the tour we wouldn't have enough time so we just took a few videos and pictures so that you could see as much as we could give you perfect yes we're so excited to have some awesome photos and videos to share with you all soon we also understand that the safety of your pigs is important to you if you were able to do this tour in person, would our participants on the Great Canadian Farm Tour be able to go into the barn? No, they wouldn't. We would love to have you all come in the barn and come and pet all the pigs, but there is a word called biosecurity, which basically means health security, and uh, you would need to shower into the barn and change your clothes and wear different clothes because we don't want sicknesses or illnesses or bugs or bacteria to come in from the outside into the barn. So here's a good video of what it shows, what biosecurity is, and what we have to do in order to go into our barn and out. So biosecurity is really, really important to pork farmers. We want to make sure that outside bugs don't come in and make our pigs sick. So you will see these signs that say stop biosecurity. Please do not enter our barn or our farm yard because we want to make sure that those bugs don't go into the barn and make the pig sick. So I see that there's a stop sign and I have to make sure that I shower into a pig farm in order to keep things healthy. So let's take a look what's inside. Inside you will see that we have a sign-in sheet and it's the date and the name and how long somebody has been pig free which means they haven't had contact with a pig 
before coming into our barn. And who was that last contact? That way, if there are problems, then we can trace it back to keep all pork farms healthy. As you can see, outdoor footwear stays outside of a shower area. So through this door, we will find a shower and some lockers for people to put their outside clothes in. And then they take a shower and go through the shower way, leaving all their outside clothes on one side of the system and going to the other side where there's more clothes and towels and things to wear on the ins at, during their work day on the inside of the barn. We will see you on the inside. Okay, hi everyone. Now that I have showered through the shower, we are on the inside of the change room. So let's go and take a quick peek on what's through this door. There's information on boards and different things all over the place. But here's something you might not expect, what would be in a barn, and that is a washing machine and dryer. And this is really, really important to keep our clothes clean for biosecurity. And we have some bathrooms. And we have a hallway that leads to the rest of the barn. And down here, let's see what it says. Stop, no boots, which means no boots past that line so that we can keep another layer of biosecurity through the barn to the outside of the, of the farm. It's kind of funny that you um, have to shower before you go into a pig barn. Yeah. Um, How long does it take yeah. you to get ready to do that, Amy? To go uh, in? Start to finish, by the time you're actually going out into the fairing rooms, you know, it's 10 minutes. 10 so, minutes. And then yeah. kind of the same thing to come back out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't want to bring whatever bugs are inside your barn. There, there could be nothing bad in your barn, you know, but you don't want to bring them out because it might affect somebody else's barn. So, yeah. Okay, just a reminder to everyone to write any questions that you have for Farmer Amy in the chat. And right now we're going to watch our first Brain Break video. So make sure you write down the correct answer in your activity book. Brain Break. Did you know? There are many different breeds of pigs. Some are big, some are small. Some pigs are white, while others can be pink black or brown. Thanks for learning with us. So pigs can all look very different um, and we're excited for Amy uh, to show us more of the pigs on her farm. Um, and can you show us around your barns? <laughs> yes, yeah, so let's go to the, let's go to the next video. This is very fun. Underneath the heat lamp so they don't get cold. All right, so this is where the piglets are born. This is called a farrowing broom. And the sows, which are the mother pigs, um, give birth to their piglets here. Did you know that a sow is pregnant for three months, three weeks, and three days, which is pretty cool. Sows, this is crazy, can have two to 26 piglets per litter. That's a lot of babies, but usually they only have about 16. These, this area where we keep the sow is called a farrowing pen. And the bars in that pen are to keep the sow and her piglets safe. 
a sow can weigh up to 600 pounds. That is really big, especially if a newborn baby piglet is really tiny and only a few pounds. You can see here we are putting a, a drying agent onto the piglet because when it comes out of the, pit, the sow, it's all wet and then it gets cold really quickly. So what we do is we put a drying agent on and there's some antimicrobial stuff in there to help the, so that the bugs and the bacteria doesn't go onto the piglet as fast. So. Oh, that's so interesting, Amy. So there's lots to do to the, even the tiniest little piglets on your farm. Everything is, has special care. Every animal is important and every animal has special things that they need. Perfect. So once the piglets are too big to be in these farrowing pens, where do they go next? Um, they go to uh, a nursery and a nursery is a room where they get sorted. Oh, here's the video for it. So a nursery is where they go and get sorted and they get to hang out with other piglets that are their same age. This is my daughter Rose in the pen. You can see that they love to play with things, right? You saw a, a toy right there hanging up and they like chewing on stuff. And piglets are really interesting. They're really organized. They poop in one area of the pen. They eat in another area of a pen and they sleep in another area of a pen. And they're really friendly. Look at them. Yeah. Uh, so Amy, um, you have some awesome windows. Um, it was really cool. That was the first time I ever got to see pigs um, that look into the nursery. And it was really cool to see like how social and playful that they are. Uh, so once pigs are too big for the nursery, uh, where, where do they go after that? They go to another area of the barn, which is called the finishing barn, which is where they get fattened up to go before they go to market. And they usually go here when they're 55 pounds. And then they are raised here till about 240, 300 pounds. And they play with the straw and they eat. See, you can see here too, they're very organized. They have poop in one area and they eat in another area. You see the markings on their back. That is non-toxic paint or crayon. And we use that. Um, to mark which ones are ready for market or a different market. We even use that marking crayon to mark pigs that might need extra special care. If they're sick or if they're, they're not getting enough food, then we can identify them and bring them to another pen where they can receive um, special care. So these guys are all just loving laying around, eating, playing, and just hanging out. Okay, it's very cool to see, Amy, that you have, we saw the littlest tiny piglets from pretty much when they're right to they're born, and you have them until you send them off to market. Yep, yep. Their whole life cycle. Yep. Okay, we have lots of questions in the chat. This is probably our most asked question. So Josie and lots of other people would like to know how many pigs you have. <laughs> we have about 8,000 pigs. So we have lots and lots of pigs to play with. Wow. Uh, we have another question um, from Ellen. She says, how many pigs did your farm start with? So we probably started with, we, we started with about 500 sows and we're about a thousand now. And we started with just little babies and when we would send them to another farmer to finish. And then now we actually finish them ourselves. So lots of different stages of growth in our farm. That's great to see that you're, you can expand lots and you have mm -hmm. expanded lots. Yeah. Okay, one more question here. There's lots of interest in all these showers that you need to take to go into the <laughs> barn. So 3B would like to know how many times a day would your farmers be in and out of the barn and how many showers would that be? So farmers, our employees go into the barn in the morning and then they come out at night. But my husband goes in and out of the barn all the time. So he might take like four, five, six, probably you take two, right? So one in and one out. So he could take four to six showers a day. Wow, That's a lot so of very clean. Yeah, farmer, <laughs> pig farmers are really clean people. <laughs> yes, and pigs themselves are very clean animals, right? Yes, they are. Okay, so with that, we're going to jump into our second brain break. 
brain break. Did you know there are more than 7,000 pig farms across Canada? Thanks for learning with us. Okay, so there's about 7,000 pig farms in Canada and on Prince Edward Island, there's around 20. So there's lots of pig farms. Oh, what's that? Is that today's mystery word? I think so. So today we're on Prince Edward Island. So you're gonna write down the word Canadian beside the province. And then you'll also add this word to your mystery sentence. And if you've watched all the tours so far, you should have one blank left. So Amy, we have lots of questions here and one of them is about what the pigs eat. So what do you feed your pigs? So we feed our pigs wheat and barley and corn, uh, which provides energy for our pigs. And then we feed um, also soybean and canola meal for protein. Yeah. Okay. And do you grow these crops on your farm? We don't, but we spread manure, which is like really good nutrients on the farmers that we purchase the grain from. So oh, okay. that high quality grain um, that has lots of good nutrients in it is very important for our pigs. Um, one of the thing to know that's really important is not to feed pigs table scraps. Um you know, it's like eating candy. You can eat candy all day long, but doesn't mean you're going to be healthy, right? So eating a well-balanced diet with lots of nutrients and vitamins and minerals is what we feed our pigs. Okay. So they have a diet that they follow pretty strictly too. Yes, they do. Yeah. Very important to eat healthy. <laughs> um, how else uh, do you care for your animals, Amy? So, um, we make sure, like you saw the, the dry aging, agent in the fairing pens, um, we measure exactly the amount of kg for each sow when she gets fed. Um, we watch, go walk through the nurseries and the finishing pens to make sure everybody is doing well. Oh, here's some little pigs in the nurseries. And if they're not, then we have to mark them and put them in a separate pen. And if they're if they're really sick, then they go in a separate pen and we might call the veterinarian and uh, the veterinarian might offer us some ideas of what to do with that or prescribe something too. So, and our employees are all go to school. They are spe they specifically go to school to raise pigs. So it's very important to know what you're doing. That's for sure. Yeah, um, I think we have time uh, for a question. Um, so what are baby pigs called? I think we covered this, but yeah, piglets. They're called piglets. piglets. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we should have gone over that at the start. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Donut school is just around the corner from us. Oh, Hi. Nice. <laughs> okay, we have some other questions here. Cohen wants to know how long it takes for a pig to have a baby. Wow. So if they were born then in about one year they would have another baby so pigs grow fast they grow really really fast okay very interesting to know how they can develop so quickly and then have more piglets themselves uh, now with that we're going to jump into our job spotlight for today so we'll get to learn about an exciting career in agriculture job spotlight Powered by Think Ag. Agriculture and food inspectors make sure the food we eat is safe. What do agriculture and food inspectors do? I visit farms and food production sites to make sure food is being handled properly. I make sure employees follow safety rules. I check that all foods being sold to the public are labeled correctly.
Okay, so there's many careers in agriculture and Amy, I know you on your farm, you work with many different individuals and many different roles that they play. Um, so we're going to watch a video and meet some of them and students on Prince Edward Island or in Quebec or in Ontario, you might recognize someone in this video. So keep an eye out. Hi, I'm Darren. I'm a truck driver. I deliver supplies to corn farms all over Canada. Uh, my name's Eddie, folks, and uh, I pick up garbage at pork farms. Hi, I'm Steve Renanco. I'm the manager of all audit and certification at Les Viandes du Breton. Hello, my name is Joanne. As a consultant, I provide support to pork farmers through human resources and health and safety advice. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm a butcher. I process pork for your barbecue. Hi, I'm Tim Sieber. I'm the executive director of PEI Pork. I work for the producers. I work with government to help them have programs that they can have better barns. I also work with programs that they can have healthier hogs. They can produce safe food. We also work with scientists so that they can do research that we can produce better feed and healthier hogs for people to grow. Hi, my name is Kendall Doherty and I work for PEI Mutual Insurance Company. My job is to provide insurance for farms all across PEI, including pork farms like Pure Pork Farms. Hi, my name is Kathleen St. Pierre. I'm an engineer. I design, install and repair feed mills uh, that feed pork. Uh, I work at my desk. And in the air! Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Tenbergen. I am a veterinarian and I make sure that the pigs are healthy and that they reach their full potential at Pure Pork. Hi, my name is Jeff Campbell. I'm the Dairy and Livestock Development Officer for the province of Prince Edward Island. I work with the hog industry and producers to deliver programming to help ensure that their industry is sustainable for this generation and the next. Hi, my name is Simon and I safely drive the pork to market. Hi, I'm Farmer Joel. And I'm Farmer Amy. We love what we do, and we love working with all the people that support the pork industry. We enjoy bringing healthy, nutritious pork to Canadian families. And when you grow up and find a job, we look forward to working with you if you choose to work with pork families too. Okay, so Amy, it looks like you have to rely on a lot of other people to make sure your farm runs smoothly. Yes, we cannot do it alone. We need a team. That's amazing. Okay, so we've come to our last section of this farm tour, and we get to ask Amy lots of questions from students all across <laughs> Canada. So let's get started. So how many people work on your farm? We have about six people and we need more people to work on our farm. We don't have enough. So we work lots of hours. I bet. And your kids help out lots too? <laughs> yes, more than they want to. <laughs> uh, the next question we have is um, class 3B would like to know how many times a day would your farmers be in and out of the farm? Oh, uh, I, think we already, I think we already got that question. Um, no. So uh, we have Cohen wants to know how long it would take for a pig to have a baby. Oh, we got that question too. <laughs> um, okay, I don't think we got this question yet. Claire, ha um, Claire wants to know how old does a pig get before it is turned into pork? About six months from birth. So they grow fast. Yeah. Very fast. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Okay. Um, so Sam is wondering how long a baby gets to stay with its mother. For about three weeks. And it's it, like I said, they grow fast and they're ready. Their stomachs are ready for um, kid food, piglet food, right? So right. grains and things. And, and I think you've used this word in the tour. You said the word wean. And that means, so that's when you start to take the, you separate the baby from the mother, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so Karen, uh, a question from Karen's class. Joanne wants to know, um, are pigs intelligent animals? Oh, they are very smart. They they can, like I said, they organize themselves in their pens, right? So they 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 all, all of them in that pen just go to that one spot. 
to poop and pee. They do, they know what they're doing. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty cool. And um, you guys have some pretty cool toys that they all play with as well. Like they, they like to keep their brains occupied. Yeah. Okay, our next question here. Macy wants to know when you started your farm. So we bought the farm and it was already going. So this farm here was started in 2000, but we purchased it in 2015. Okay. So about seven years. Yep. Uh, so what does a pig's uh, skin feel like? So the babies are nice and soft, but the mums, they have long hair and it can, can be kind of rough. Very good. So it gets... Uh, <laughs> All right. Lily wants to know, do you keep the boy and girl pigs in separate spaces? When they get older, yes, we do. Um, but... When they're young, they all get play. They all play together. Some farmers actually separate the boys and the girls, but in our farm, we don't. And so you, we've said sow. So we call um, a pig that's had a baby a sow. What do you yep. call the male pigs? They're called boars. And then pigs that haven't had babies but are going to have babies, we call them gilts. So G I L T S. Yeah, gilts. So lots of different words in the yeah, pork there industry. Are. <laughs> uh, the next question we have is, why do pigs like to roll in the mud? Another question from Donna. So good question. Pigs like to roll in the mud to keep cool. So some farmers have their pigs outside and some farmers have their pigs inside. to And if they're inside, we can protect them better from diseases or predators. And then if they're outside, then they roll around in the mud and stay cool. And the farmer has to be more vigilant to take care of their animals. And you, you keep your pigs cool with fans and different things? Yep, there's different styles of barns. Sometimes they have curtains on the side and the air can go through and our barn has fans in it. And then the air comes through the attic and cools off the pigs. Okay, so Jace wants to know, how much bacon do you get from one pig? Um, lots of bacon. And so one pig will probably, well, it depends on how much bacon you want to eat. Do you eat bacon every week? You know, maybe about 20 pounds, 30 pounds. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of bacon. <laughs> um, what color uh, do you paint the pigs who are sick? It all depends on what marking crayon is nearby, but most of the time you don't need to mark pigs, so, you know, only if you see something. So any color crayon, we have red and blue and green. Very good. Okay, so Jackson in 3D, 3D <laughs> wants to know what kind of foods do we get from pigs? There is so many different kinds of things that you can get from a pig. So there's sausages and tenderloins, ribs, bacon, um, porchetta roast, pork roast, ham, Easter ham. Yeah. Um, some people like the feet. Some people uh, like ham hocks and head cheese. There's so many different things to eat from a pig. Yeah. Lots of good food. Um, so how old is the oldest pig on your farm? So, like I said, pigs grow really fast. And so they don't have a whole long lifespan. Probably three years is our oldest pig on our farm. Yeah. <clears throat> JP wants to know how long it takes for a baby pig to open their eyes after they are born. When a baby, baby pig is born, they open their eyes right away and they're still attached to the mum with their umbilical cord and they can go walk around to the mum's um, nipples and drink while they're still attached to the mum. So it's pretty cool. They, they get up really fast and they eat really, really fast. Wow. So it's like they almost have an instinct right when they're born. They know what to do. <laughs> they do right away. That's the first thing they want. Very interesting. Uh, the next question we have from Jace is, what is the smallest weight a piglet can weigh? Ooh. 
well, a couple of pounds, half, half a pound, you know, depending on what it is, you know, what, if it's a small pig being born, just like humans, you know, sometimes you have great big babies and sometimes you have small babies. So yeah, about a pound. I have a question. Um, what is the biggest litter of pigs you've ever had on your Ooh. farm? So we've had a litter of 24 piglets, which is a problem because a mum sow has only about 16 nipples. So that means there are a few pigs that can't eat. So what we have to do is wean some other pigs off another sow early and then take the, the rest of those piglets and put them on the other sow. Now that's called fostering. And, and pigs can do fostering really well so that everybody can have something to eat. Okay, cool. Okay, so Aisha here wants to know how much food does the average pig eat in a day? So it all depends on what kind of pig it is. It maybe it's a piglet. They don't eat a whole lot when they're weaned, like just maybe a mouthful a day. But when you're a sow or you're a finishing hog, then you eat like a couple kilos a day. And it all depends on what it is, right? So if you're a sow nursing, we will feed it like 12 kilos of food every day. And that's a lot of food. That is a lot of food. <laughs> I think we have time for two more questions. Uh, the next question we have is how long is a pig pregnant for? This is a pretty cool answer. I know. <laughs> yeah, I like this answer because it's so easy to remember. It's three months three weeks and three days. And I don't know about the hours. Maybe it's three. <laughs> yeah. So humans are pregnant for nine months and pigs are, the, all you mm -hmm. have to remember is the three threes. Yeah, three threes. <laughs> okay. Our last question. Adeline <laughs> wants to know if you name all of your pigs. No. <laughs> you have 8,000 that'd be a lot to remember yeah but we keep track like you saw my daughter she had a sow card and we keep track of the numbers with the with the different sows so that we can make sure that the next time she comes into fairing or a different part of the room we have a history so we can give her special attention so you do track all of them you just don't give them no. Names. No. <laughs> okay. And I have one last question for you, Amy. What's your favorite part of being a pork farmer? Oh, you know what? I like eating pork. It's good. <laughs> you know, I like making my own sausage and my own bacon and different things. So that's, I, I like, I'm a mom. I like cooking for my kids and my husband. Right. So yeah. that's my, one of my favorite parts. And I'm sure it's pretty rewarding producing food for, people all over Canada too. Yes. Like I know what goes into that pig. It is healthy, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So we, there were so many amazing questions in the chat. Sorry, we didn't get to all of them. Um, so teachers, you can keep an eye out for some emails after the Great Canadian Farm Tour is over with some of the follow-up questions answered as well. Thank you so much, Amy. Uh, it was incredible to learn about your operation today. And yeah, thanks for showing us around your farm and teaching us about your pigs. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. And I'm really excited that we were able to do this. It was good. Thanks, Amy. And Erin, I want to thank you for being my co-host today and bringing me to Prince Edward Island. Thanks. It was, it was a lot of fun to be here today. <laughs> yeah, glad you could come. And I want to thank you all for joining us on the 10th stop of the Great Canadian Farm Tour. I can't believe there's only one tour left. So this tour is going to be in Ontario and it's next Wednesday. And we're going to be visiting a fish farm. So it's going to be very interesting and there's going to be lots of special guests joining. So make sure you attend our last tour on the Great Canadian Farm Tour. So as a final reminder, teachers, don't forget about our contest and the mystery word for today. All you have to do is take a photo of your class and make sure you use the hashtag on the screen. And here's the mystery word one last time. So today's word is Canadian. We will see you all next week in Ontario.